the, the future of neonatology, the less is better. So the less non-invasive ventilation at morning, in salsa to morning, inshallah. We are talking about uh, the uh, inhaled destroyed. Okay. So I have uh, no conflict or interest, if I mention. So Banha, it is Banha, not Benha. Banha in the north of Cairo, like 40 kilo in the north of Cairo. The university started at uh, 1978. So uh, we have the Nile Cornish. This is a, a view of Banha. And uh, uh, Banha is the capital of Qalyubaya Governorate, where the Nile River divided to two branches, main branches, one in the west and one in the east, Dumyat. Uh, near Port Said and the other Rashid near Skandaria. And this is Al Qanatar, where it's a very famous, as uh, this is the logo of Qalyubay. Okay. So, respiratory morbidity is the most common cause of admission in the NICO. Either the RDS and the preterm babies or transient tachymnia of the newborn and simulated with meconium respiration. This is the we have controversy, management, prevention, and management. Continuous trial is the one of the most investigated medicine. Uh, our drug in neonatal care, uh, more than 90 trials, our randomized trials, more than 9,000 new courses studied for the effect either systemic or uh, health, and still we have no clear answer. We can use or we cannot. So today we will discuss the, how the stride working bronchopulmonary dysplasia discuss the effect of inhaled stride in management of PPD. This is the main goal. Discuss the update of intra-tracheal installation of corticosteroid for management of bronchopulmonary dysplasia review. Is there is any rule for transit uh, health stride in PPM and meconium aspiration? You know, bronchopulmonary dysplasia, the uh, rising problem because we have those improvement of the initial care, we have many, many premature and micro brain baby living. More than 50% of pre lovers with infants have bronchopulmonary dysplasia and still affecting the baby after the neonatal age. In the, we have many problems, neurodevelopmental problems, and bronchopulmonary We know bronchopulmonary dysplasia has multifactorial passages. One of the main causes is the inflammation. So, tried as anti inflammatory drugs, as major anti inflammatory drugs used to treat or to manage or to prevent the bronchopulmonary. Both systemic and the inhaled with their anti-inflammatory actions are often used for bronchopulmonary management. The effect actually through reducing inflammation, reduce lymphocyte count, promoting anti-inflammatory cytokines, suppressing the pro-inflammatory cytokines, accelerating the lung proliferation, and enhance the production of surfactant, decrease vascular permeability, and increase the lung fluid absorption, which is reflected on the lung compliance outcome. So, we, as we know, the systemic uh, corticosteroid has short term and long term problems. The short term, we have GIT perforation, GIT bleeding. Also, we have hypertension and hyperglycemia. The problem usually comes with a long effect, especially in the rural development effect and the growth parameters, especially the head. Uh, circumference. This is why inhaled stride looks a reasonable alternative to systemic stride. The specification it has higher pulmonary deposition, reduced systemic bioavailability, rapid systemic clearance, beneficial effects on the target organs with the reduction of the adverse systemic complication. This is the inhaled stride meet our expectation or not? We'll see. So I will review the meta-analysis. So we have three meta-analysis actually for the inhaled strides. Uh, one of them says it is early use. They review the early use of inhaled strides. They said 
earlier than 14 days. The meta-analysis of early death destroyed in Greek Kali. We have 1,640 returns. The result was reduced probable more dyspareunia risk among survivors, reduced composite outcome of this of probable more dyspareunia at 36 weeks post menstrual age, significant reduction of use of systemic steroid, no significant difference were found in the neonated morbidities and the other effects. Actually, this meta-analysis takes early and late. This is the whole, and also is going with use of inhaled steroid, using the proof of our memory dyspareunia at 36 weeks. But one of almost half of the babies used in the meta-analysis was coming from one study, the European study for inhaled steroid neurosis, almost the half. They recruited 813 infants, gestational age between 23 and 27 plus six days. Any form who needed any form of positive pressure ventilation, positive support at the first 12 hours of time. Use of the line was given 400 micrograms every 12 hours for the first 14 days, followed by 200 micrograms every 12 hours for day 15, from day 15 until the last dose of sulfur. The last dose, either the baby, no need more oxygen support or the pressure support, or the baby reaches 32 weeks. Buzonide group saw significant reduction in the bronchopulmonary dysplasia, 28 versus 38, reduced composite this for bronchopulmonary dysplasia at 36 weeks post menstrual age, 40 versus 46, but we have increased mortality in almost 17 versus 13.6 uh, at the age of 36. I think there was no planning for follow up, but for this high mortality, they did follow up study for like 18 to 22 months for this baby. They found no difference in the neurodevelopment disabilities. We have no many studies following the inhaled stride. Uh, at 18 to 20 months, but still the mortality continues to be high. It's almost 20 versus 14.5. What about the late inhaled corticosteroids? The meta analysis discussed the late inhaled corticosteroids, discussed or explained after seven days until complete 36 weeks. This is the last update of the beta analysis or the Cochrane review site. This is done in 2022. This is update for 2017, uh, done by Professor Onlan. They used seven randomized control study, 218 preterm infants comparing in health steroid versus placebo. And at this update, they removed one study which was containing systemic steroid. The update, the review at 2017, it was eight studies. But either in eight, this update, 2022 or 2017, there's still no effect for late in health or steroid in improvement of the incidence or the composite incidence of bronchopulmonary dysplasia or bronchopulmonary and mortality. There is Meta analysis comparing inhaled steroid to systemic steroid. Also, either early inhaled and late inhaled. For the early inhales, there was no clear difference between early inhaled steroid and the early systemic steroid for bronchopulmonary dysplasia, mortality, or cerebral palsy. The difference in other short term outcome in the Cochrane review includes longer duration of assisted ventilation and oxygen therapy for the baby who received inhaled steroid, less hyperglycemia with inhaled steroid. Also for the rate inhaled corticosteroid in comparison to systemic steroid, there was no evidence for any benefits or harm for inhaled steroids compared with systemic steroids uh, for bronchopulmonary dysplasia mortality or cerebral palsy. Other short-term complications of corticosteroid were not substantially different between this group even. 
So what about corticosteroid installation or intratracheal administration? Looks at alternative to conventional nebulization, installation of steroids with surfactant intratrachea. Surfactant has unique spreading property, enables the mix of this steroid and reach to the far area in the alveoli, maximizing anti-inflammatory effect and distal gas exchange. Different inhaled steroid studies, budesonide is one of them, and mostly used because it is can be conjugated with the fatty acid of surfactant of the cell, sorry, along the cell with gradual release, which prolong the anti-inflammatory effect in plasma concentration, one eighth of lung tissue, short ter ter thermal half-life, rapid metabolism and deliver with minimal systemic. So uh, the pilot study is done by Yeh and by well, Professor Yeh, intratracheal administration of surfactant of 100 milligrams of surfactant mixed with budesonide, 20, uh, 250 microgram, and the control infant received only surfactant 100 milligram with significant lower incidence of bronchomalnore in dysplasia and this decreased the need of oxygen exposure to surfactant at second dose. No short-term complications like infection or arteriosclerosis prematurity, no effect on neuromuscular or cognitive function at the mean age of three years. This is also they have follow-up study. So, uh, Dr. Yeh followed by a multi-center studies done in Taiwan and the United States, and they yield the same result. And this is a meta-analysis for both studies, which is going with good effect, significant of both bronchomalmonary dysplasia and bronchomalmonary dysplasia and mortality at 36 weeks. However, recent studies, several recent studies found there is no significant effect between installation steroids and the non and the control group with surfactant only. Many, many studies, recent also in 19, uh, sorry, 2020 or 2019. Uh, one of them is escalation dose. They try different doses of droids or butazamide to detect the its effect. This is the correct dose or not. They try 25 microgram, 50 microgram, 100 microgram mixed with the surfactant. Uh, this study found no, totally the big is have no significant difference in the rate of bronchopulmonary dysplasia, even the control spitter. But they found most of the affected baby, as you see, this is the same study, the baby who receives the lowest dose, the tenth dose is effective in prevention. But they, when they are reviewing the study, they found these babies have a little bit larger weight in comparison to the uh, other uh, groups. Also, the right effect that has no clinical respiratory benefits at any dosing level for intubated extreme uh, low gestational age to burn. One tenth dose uh, of the previous concentration known has minimal systemic metabolic effect and appeared effective in lung targeted anti-inflammatory action. He said because they did also uh, inflammatory markers either in the aspirate or in the blood of the baby. So this difference in the results, why it's different? I think it's many explanation. The timing to give the inhaled steroid with a surfactant. The pilot and the one center study by Dr. Yeh has done, they give surfactant air within the first four hours. Other studies give when the baby has CPAP failure or need post pressure well, so to be intubated mostly after 12 hours. Uh, this is a study which uh, evaluated the doses Started from the third day to 14 days. Okay, this may affect also the criteria of uh, admission of the babies. Some use the weight less than one uh, 2.5 or one 2.25, and though some studies use gestational age, also may be the risk. The many studies done in Taiwan, uh, Korean study, and uh, Western or United States. So we have uh, for effectiveness, this is the meta-analysis in 2022. 
for the effectiveness and safety of early or combined utilization of the design and surfactant by airway for bronchopulmonary dysplasia prevention of preterm babies in randomized study. Text presented in English and the other in Chinese. Total 1,735 premature infants, RDS, 858, the Zanai group, and the other is a control group. The result early combined utilization of the zanide and surfactant uh, in the airway prior in bronchopulmonary incidence, mortality, the combined composite outcome, bronchopulmonary dysplasia of mortality, additional dose of surfactant, no need for additional surfactant. Duration of assisted and invasive ventilation, duration of hospital stay. These benefits were not associated with increased uh, adverse outcome. Conclusion the early installation of glutazonide and surfactant by the airway uh, might be an effective and safe for bronchopulmonary dysplasia prevention in preterm babies with full RDS. However, many of the included studies were small. Were from Asian origin, more well designed, randomized control study with larger sample still. Uh, and this is what's going now. We have many, many studies or uh, randomized trial working. The one thing is uh, plus trial, including almost 1,000 baby. Also, fifth trial, 1,106 baby, and different sites in Canada, Taiwan, United States, Spain, Australia. I think this is the era in the Next few years, we, we may have recommendation in the uh, usage of uh, intracranial installation of steroids. Uh, I will this. So, what is the effect of of tachycardia? Transient tachycardia of the the newborn is one of the most common cause of admission of the late preterm and term babies in the NICU. Actually, we have rising increasing the number in Egypt because we have very, very high level of urinary infection in people. The baby level like 27, 28 years. Most of them have, uh, with increasing the risk of transient tachypnea. The pathogenesis is related to the epithelial sodium channel, uh, which is the important pathway for clearance of lung uh, flow. Lower expression of epithelial sodium channels is possible, one of the possible cause mechanisms for transient tachypnea of the newborn. This is antenatal. Alzac. And the postnatally normal, you should clear this air flow. However, the steroid may show increase the transcription of epithelial sodium cells, decrease the rate of its degradation, increase the activity of existing channel. This leads to clinical trial. This is why the rationale we can may give uh, inhaled steroid in the transient tachypnea. Actually, I'm study done in Israel. They recruited 49 babies and they found no effect. They gave the baby in health destroyed two doses, 1,000 microgram, 12 hours apart, and they followed the baby with respiratory parameters and the uh, removal or weaning from oxygen. No detected side effect, but respiratory support at each time, point of time, continuous unsupported breathing. No difference between the two groups. Clinical score, no different. Even respiratory support or discharge, no different. The conclusion, the study was unable to detect the beneficial effect of early administration of inhaled destroyed on clinical course of transient academy of the newborn in late preterm and term infants. Larger studies still needed. The study repeated in Egypt for 100 baby, but they used a distal, distal water with a placebo, which is very strange. They found better outcome, and they had evaluation also for only number of babies who need CPAP and the duration of hospitalization. It was better in the control. However, we have two, another Egyptian study evaluated, inhaled destroyed, inhaled the bronchodilators, beta-2 agonist, and epinephrine for the treatment of the transient tachypnea, separate, not combined, and they found no positive outcome. There is no improvement in the baby with transient tachypnea of the newborn who received the inhaled destroyed in post study. So crane review, we have two crane review, one 2020 and 2022. 
for the treatment of transient tachypnea, and both of them found was unable to find any positive effect of steroid, inhaled steroid, on the treatment of transient tachypnea of the deep. So what about the uh, meconium aspiration syndrome? Also, we have generations of neonates in Egypt because of the high rate of cesarean section. Also, we have lower number of babies with uh, meconium aspiration. And so meconium aspiration syndrome, we have the pathogenesis. We know we have mechanical uh, effect, either obstruction complete or partial obstruction of the airway with consequence of atelectasis or pneumothorax plus the chemical pneumonitis, which appear both of them or all the effect lead to hypoxia, acidosis, uh, and the hypercapnia, which may lead to uh, pulmonary hypertension. Uh, Sebation, meconium aspiration was part of the pathogenesis, especially the chemical pneumonitis, the activation of macrophage reduced intense inflammatory response, infiltration of polymorphic nuclear lymphocytes, into the lung, increase the vascular permeability causing protein exudation in the alveolar spaces and the inactivation of the uh, surfactant. So this is why the pathogenesis of meconium aspiration syndrome, severity is related to the clinical, the severe inflammation, we have more important uh, clinical condition. So suppression of the inflammation looks key logic in the uh, management. Right, can downregulate the inflammatory process and cytokines using a steroid to suppress inflammation in infants with meconium aspiration syndrome could be beneficial. Uh, actually, most of the study came from India. One study came from the United States. Local and systemic administration of steroids resulted in most of animal studies and even in pediatrics decreased histological in neonatal age group, sorry, decreased histological evidence of pulmonary inflammation improve oxygenation, decrease neutrophil migration, reduce reactive oxidative damage, and subsequently decrease the pulmonary tissue necrosis. I will review the meta-analysis. This is the latest one. It's reviewing 10 studies, four studies for systemic steroids usage in bronchopulmonary stadia, and we have six studies using either uh, inhaled and or inhaled plus the stem. So we have two studies compared nebulized normal saline IV T10 5 water or no treatment as a control versus IV missile pregnisolone or nebulized we designed. We have three groups. Two studies compared nebulized normal saline versus nebulized budesonide. One study compared nebulized 3% sodium chloride with IV normal saline to nebulized budesonide and IV missile pregnisolone. One study Patient receiving intratracheal inspiration of surfactant or intratracheal inspiration of surfactant plus budesonide. This is also intratracheal inspiration is used for surfactant uh, for uh, management of meconium aspiration. Uh, so we have low uh, quality evidence suggests that steroid therapy do not reduce the mortality in case of meconium aspiration group. Very low quality evidence suggests that inhaled budesonide reduced the hospital stay. Postmortem bregnisolone and inhaled budesonide reduced the duration of oxygen required. So take one message. Inhaled steroid might potentially improve the pulmonary inflammation while avoiding any systemic uh, or less systemic adverse effect. The early administration of health uh, steroids seems to be effective in prevention of bronchopulmonary dysplasia, but the serious issue regarding the increased mortality in the treatment. And again, when they, I review why the mortality rate is high in pneurisis, no definite cause found. And some uh, research that said because they received very high dose of inhaled steroids, they started by 400 every 12 hours, all for like 14 days. The area, uh, no significant benefits of late inhaled steroid administration for prevention of bronchopulmonary dysplasia. The intracranial inspiration of vidazonide and surfactant is a promising option for prevention of bronchopulmonary dysplasia, and we need more trials in different types, uh, different uh, sites of Inhaled Inhaled cortic steroid has no role in the treatment of transient tachypnea of the newborn. Inhaled steroid. Uh, 
have minimal effect on the respiratory distress, oxygenation, and duration of hospitalization, but not in the mort on the mortality in cases with meconium aspiration syndrome, and still need uh, more lung-like Thank you very much.